From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Augusta McDonald and for Diane Parker. The cost of living in Montana is soaring. Real estate prices spiked following the pandemic, sending property tax bills sky high. You're probably seeing those now. Montana's legislature and Governor Greg Gianforte could have done something about this, but nothing was passed in the 2023 legislative session. Now, as MTN's Andrea Lutz reports, some Montanans are facing a really tough decision. Pay those much higher tax bills or sell their properties. It's been a full circle journey. So here's the driveway and then this is the main road. For Deborah Newville. I would say I am three. A Montanan returning home to the place she grew up. So this is the home that we're sitting in. Here to this property on Manly Road in the Gallatin Valley. My dad did some of the electrical and, you know, of course, some of the outlets don't work. <laughs> and my parents ended up buying this property in 68. As a child, she reveled in its beauty. Well, but now it does make me sad. She faces an ugly reality. It threw me such a curveball. Yeah, yeah. This 10-acre, 2,500 square foot property with its retro green countertops, now valued at over two million, saw a 70% property tax increase. So approximately a thousand a month is going out for property taxes. Deborah says she couldn't believe it, so she started asking questions. Um, our immediate neighbor next door, which happens to be the governor, um their taxes seem to kind of just go up a bit. The governor's 11 acre, 4,400 square foot property saw an increase of only 19%. The reason, an agriculture exemption. Manly Road is home to longtime family farms. However, the Newvilles say that's changed. Now everywhere you look, mansions. We own 10. It's mainly a cottonwood forest. We're paying more than he is. He's not a farmer. He's a land developer and speculator who's using that ag exemption improperly to not pay taxes on it. And it seems the governor's Helena neighbors are paying more in property taxes too. After looking at public tax documents of more than 40 homes that surround Greg Gianforte's home on 618 Madison Avenue, all but a few saw sizable increases, while the governor's property decreased by 7%. According to the Department of Revenue, the reason the governor's house was reappraised at a higher value, but still by less than his neighbors. Assessed at $770,000, but currently on the market for $2 million. Every action item that was taken by the legislature, by the governor on taxes was all tax cuts. Kyle Schmock with the Senate Republican says Montana's property tax issue is complicated. So if Montanans are looking for blame, he says it's not with the governor. Almost all property tax in Montana goes to paying for three things, county government, city government, and schools. I do not believe in my heart of hearts that Governor Gianforte tried to get a special deal and got it. Brad Molnar of Laurel is also a Senate Republican. While he doesn't believe Gianforte has been unethical, he says state leaders, including the governor, could have prevented the property tax increases. The Department of Revenue came in and said, if you, you're going to be hit with some really high property tax increases. If you don't want to do that, what we have done historically is change the multiplier and lower the impact. Nobody did. We repeatedly reached out to the governor, hoping to sit down and have him explain the disparities over his Helena mansion, but he declined. But a spokesperson said through email there's more to the story regarding the Newvilles, saying the governor delivered historic property tax relief for Montanans who live here, not for those who live out of state or those with second and third homes pointing to how the Newvilles still own a home in Portland, Oregon. But the Newvilles don't buy it. Again, when somebody maybe is playing the system a little bit. You got real farmers who produce food for people to eat, and then you got your tax deduction farmers. 
86. Deborah's dad nurtured this property for his family for years. He made it through the pandemic. She's always intended on keeping the property. To have something um, special like this to stay within a family. But now... I don't know, it's a question mark. Uh, every... we'll see how it goes. Holding out for a more permanent tax solution. Uh, he really thought, uh, I think we could handle it. In Bozeman, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. The governor's team never told MTN uh, a clear answer on how much farmland he owns. They do say his land rotates between irrigated barley and alfalfa. Ag exemptions work like this. In Montana, land over 160 acres automatically gets an agriculture designation. However, if your parcel is less than 20, you need to meet certain criteria. One way is to produce $1,500 of ag product, which, if documented, can be consumed by people or livestock. Tax expert Josh Slotnick says ag exemptions can help many family farms. No one is abusing this. The, I believe the rules need to be updated. All the people I know who are involved in agriculture are playing by the rules. People I know who pay taxes play by the rules. These rules were written a long time ago, and the rules related to ag land, I believe, need an update specifically around small-scale ag in western Montana, where Saying you can make 1500 bucks is a pretty low bar. The Newvilles asked the Department of Revenue about how they could get an ag exemption, but determined the cost to start up would be too high, and they'd have to clear out those cottonwood trees, which they say serve as a natural corridor for wildlife. In Yellowstone County, the median price for a home has been steadily rising for four years. It's now at almost $359,000. That's a 60% spike from 2020. In Bozeman, the median home price is now close to a million bucks, just $52,000 less than and median sale prices in Seattle right now. Happy Friday, everybody, and TGIF boom as we cruise on into the weekend. Showers, thunderstorms possible, but very warm temperatures. We'll take a look coming up here in just a bit. For most of us, it's just going to be a really, really nice weekend. Parts of uh, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana yeah, even the western side there of Montana, a chance where we could see some uh, strong to severe thunderstorms today. Parts of the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, northeast, gusty winds and heavy rain. And northern and central plains, above average temperatures as we cruise through the weekend. There's a big story for you there right there. Warm, very warm out there this weekend with high pressure dominating to keep us mainly dry. But we do have moisture coming in from the Pacific. We'll have a complete look at your forecast and maybe some big changes coming up next week. We'll take a look in just a bit. The deadline to file your income tax returns is quickly approaching with a mailing deadline of Monday, April 15th. Here's what you can do to avoid those late penalties. If you've left filing your taxes to the last minute, you can still file online or mail them out before Monday. However, getting a last minute tax appointment may be difficult. Tax professionals in Great Falls say your best course of action now is to file an income tax filing extension. Best thing to do is get your stuff together, get it done if you can. If you can't file an extension, it is an extension of time to file, not to pay. So you need to estimate, you know, whether you think you're going to owe or not and uh, pay that in by Monday. Um, if you can't, pay what you can because uh, penalties and interest would then start accruing at that point. So interest is at 8% right now and uh, late payment and late filing penalties are a half a percent per month up to 25 percent. Even if you do get an extension for filing, you still have to pay if you owe by the 15th. And if you're paper filing on your own by mail, it's recommended to get a return receipt to verify that you were mailed on the 15th. You can find extension forms at irs.gov or for more information, check out our website.